I'm Jamie Ellingford. I'm a research fellow at the University of Manchester and based at the Manchester Centre for Genomic Medicine. Um, my research group and the research groups that I work closely with try to unpick genetic changes that lead to disorders that impact normal vision. The Macular Society has funded us for three years to generate an incredibly powerful and unique resource that will be the first of its kind anywhere in the world. What we will do is pair the complete diversity of genomic changes that we can identify in, in an individual with gene expression profiles, so whether genes are being switched on or switched off, and to what extent they're being switched on for different parts of the eye. In particular, we're going to focus on the layer of the retina, which has photoreceptors and other things that are responsible for vision, as well as the supporting layer of the retina called the retinal pigment epithelium. We're going to put these two data sets together to understand how different genetic changes may influence the way that genes are being switched on and switched off in these different tissues. One of the fantastic advantages that we hope that this data set will allow us to gain some insight into is why particular individuals with this exactly the same genetic changes present so differently in the clinic. Like all modern genomics projects, this requires a huge interdisciplinary team to actually go from individuals, patients through to big data and actually being able to interpret those results. And so three of the key areas that um, we have individuals who are part of this project involved in are in the clinic, both counsellors as well as clinicians and ophthalmologists. In a traditional laboratory, scientists with lab coats, processing samples, using pipettes and um, test tubes, and also data scientists or computational scientists, people who are skilled to look at big data and to be able to detect trends in these big data sets that we can now generate. And so one of the fantastic things that the Macular Society is allowing us to do is to build bridges both um, with those types of scientists here in the UK, in the genomic medicine centres here in the UK, but also with some leading institutions in the United States and to start to build that collaborative relationship to generate this powerful resource. As far as we're aware, this will be the most comprehensive data set to ask this sort of question anywhere in the world. Um, other people have taken more focused looks at specific genetic changes and how that influences the switching on and switching off of particular genes. But we're going to do this in a really hypothesis free mm -hmm. and big data kind of way. And so we're going to be able to look at how a, the greatest diversity of genomic variants that have um, been described before and how they influence gene changes in these parts of the eye. So we're very much standing on the shoulder of giants here and we um, have thankfully worked really closely with people who've generated a tissue repository, the Manchester Eye Tissue Repository, here locally in Manchester, which was also funded by the Macular Society. And so lots of eyes have been very generously donated for us to be able to do this type of research on. And so we have lots of samples in the freezer and actually the first big step for us is to turn those samples, which are currently tissue, into um, a molecule that we call RNA. So to be able to access these RNA molecules. And so that involves um, dissecting and grinding up the tissue and processing it in a certain way. And then using those samples to generate these big data sets. And there's two key types of data sets we're going to generate. One is the genome using DNA, and the other is the transcriptome looking at gene expression changes. So I was inspired really early on during my research career. It was actually during my master's project, and um, I was lucky enough to come into a fantastic collaborative, scientific, but also clinically orientated team. Mm. And one of the projects that I was involved in was looking at genome-wide um, variation for a family um, who had presented with a, um, a really severe visual dis um, impairment very early in life. And by looking at their genome changes, actually by working with teams in the clinic, we were also able to integrate these genetic findings into their clinical care pathway. 
and could see real advantages to understanding the precise genetic reason for their condition and how that could change the management of them going forward. And so that type of work really inspired me it's to that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my career. And so that's what's led me to here now talking to you. One of the key objectives of this project is to generate this really powerful resource that will be its first of its kind. And we hope to release that to the scientific community to allow others to also benefit from that and to integrate this as part of their research projects. From our point of view, one of the key things that we're trying to do is to pinpoint specific changes that are changing gene expression in these layers of the eye, but by doing so, a change in the way that genetic disorders are presenting. So conditions which are caused by other genetic changes that we find through diagnostic services that are done here in Manchester, but also across the world. And to understand how this complete picture of these rare genetic changes, which traditionally cause these rare conditions that affect vision and how that combination with the types of changes that we'll pick up in this study and how they influence gene expression, how we can put these things together to understand and pr better predict how an individual's disorder will present. Mm. We hope that one of the um, advantages of doing this is that it opens up avenues in the future to develop targeted treatment and to be able to directly treat or prevent blindness going forward. There's some evidence that this combination of a individual's genomic background alongside rare variants, which are driving genetic disorders, is really important for how a disorder presents or whether it presents at all. And so whilst this has been shown for other disorders, we're only really at the beginning of understanding how this can happen for visual disorders. And for some preliminary evidence that has come from the, the lab here in Manchester has shown that for particular types of genetic disorders that affect vision, that this is certainly happening. What we'd like to do with this resource is to do this more comprehensively to cover all the different types of um, genes and genetic changes which can cause the onset of macular disorders. Initially, we're funded for three years and actually a large part of the data generation from this project will happen in the first 12 to 18 months. We have to spend a lot of time analysing the data and being able to process that with really powerful computers because of the sheer volume of data that we're going to collect. And that will come towards the end of those three years. Yeah. But actually, one of the key objectives here is to release this resource to the community. And so we hope that actually this is just the beginning of the journey for this type of resource and that it can be integrated into the analysis of other scientists across the world, as well as our future research projects. One of the key things that we hope is that by releasing this resource, making it open source to the community, that that can lead to the development of new treatments and new ways of preventing macular disease. Just like the Macular Society, our, our ultimate aim with the research groups that we work with here in Manchester is to prevent and to treat genetic eye disorders. And so we hope that in the future that the knowledge that we acquire from these types of studies can, can take us some way along that journey to fulfilling that, that aim. I can't express enough gratitude for um, to the Macular Society and also to people who are contributing to the Macular Society because without this money, without these funds, this research simply wouldn't be possible. Um, if you yourself are watching this video and have contributed or have done an activity to ensure that contributions um, are coming through to the Macular Society, all we can do is, is thank you for your generous support and the generosity of your time that allows us to do this type of science.